So this is going to be a fun show. I think everybody's really excited about where we're going to go with this today. And uh, oh, hello and welcome to Conversations in Commerce, where we have candid conversations about technology, e-commerce, and the supply chain. And we try to have a little fun in the process. I'm your host, Andrew Alford. And with me today is the brilliant and baffling, can I say baffling? Well, you've already said it, so sure, why not? All right, so <laughs> with me today is the brilliant and baffling co-host of mine, Alyssa, say hello. Hi. So, um, Alyssa, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, this is exciting. This is our first show. What are you, you, you excited? Uh, yes, I'm very excited. Cool. So, um, you are relatively new to the liftoff community. So, um, for the folks at home and the folks in the office, tell us a little about yourself and what you're doing with the community. Well, I have a super fun job. I get to play on social media all day. I make videos. And my favorite part, I'm working on establishing a platform for our community and a host of content and resources that they can use to improve their e-commerce posture and succeed with the platform. Um, playing on social media all day, isn't that, that's like a HR violation, isn't it? Not when you slide them a Benji or two. HR problems tend to go away that way. You, you just might be a genius, <laughs> but we're going to have to talk about that offline, okay? Yeah. <laughs> next, next step. Um, so, um, we have a very special guest with us today. We managed to get ourselves an A-lister. I'm talking about the A-lister. Um, today's, um, today's guest host is an incredibly accomplished individual. Um, he's on the executive committee for the board of directors for Brandchain. Um, he's done a ton of work with the folks at Promo Kitchen. He is the chief technology officer for Brandfuel. The man is a walking NFC device. We'll talk about that later. And he's just one hell of a cool guy. Um, welcome to the stage uh, or the show, Eric Granada. Hi, Eric. Nice, nice hey, to Thanks for having me. I'm glad you brought up the NFC chip. It's uh, just kind of a, a little perk that came with the vaccine. It's really neat. Yeah, you know, I was expecting to glow after I got mine. It, it, it never happened, but yours took. So I, I don't know. I'll have to try it again. <laughs> yeah, get those boosters. Absolutely. So, um, by the way, did you hear clapping just a second ago? I didn't realize we had a live studio audience. I, maybe I missed something. Did you guys hear the clapping too? I was wondering where that was coming from. Yeah, I thought we would add that in post, but... I thought it was in my head. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> just kind of happened. So anyway, getting things back on track. So, like, you stay busy. And I mean, like, really busy. Like, how, how do you do it? Like, what's your secret? Um, I mean, how do, you, how do you just manage to do all these things together at once? Yep. Um, so... The way I do it is with a good bit of hustle, some help from automation, and quite frankly, just desperately searching Google for answers. A fellow Googler, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I can't tell you how many times we've been deep in coding, and I, that's a coder's best friend, right, is, is the old Google. You don't know anything. There's no excuse not to know anything anymore, right? Somebody can't say, well, I don't know how to do that. Go to Google, Google it, YouTube it, right? <laughs> I mean, for real. Isn't that what you do, Alyssa? Every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah, I ask, you know, uh, do some marketing stuff. I'll go Google that for you. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Eric, um, inquiring minds just, just really want to know. Um, you're an intriguing guy. You've been through a lot. You've seen a lot. And I think everybody would really just want to hear, what's Eric's origin story? Where, where did it all begin and what got you to where you are today? Okay, so a million years ago, I had worked and been educated in video production and motion graphics. Out of desperation, uh, did a lot of freelancing and graphic design for print and some web development. I wound up leaving video production and moving into uh, our industry through Bobby Lehu. So Bobby and I met once upon a time at a tech event that the local OKC community was putting on. And he actually ended up beta testing an app for me that I was working on. Uh, and so four years later, when a mutual friend of ours said that this guy named Bobby that he knew was looking for a digital ninja, uh, I thought that name sounds familiar. And so Bobby and I reconnected uh, over lunch and he told me what he was looking for. And I ended up taking a position as director of e-commerce at Robin, uh, building and managing 451 sites and was there for about 10 years, and then about a year ago, made the move to Brand Fuel as CTO. Man, that's amazing news. By the way, congratulations on the Brand Fuel thing. We, we love Brand Fuel, great company. Obviously, love working with you. Um, 
And I guess uh, tracking back to Bobby for a minute, um, we'll throw this up on screen here. Here's a picture of you and me and Bobby just kind of hanging out on stage in Clearwater at a brand chain event. Um, what do you want to tell us about that event? Anything resonate there? Yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic event. Uh, it was wonderful having Bobby moderate that panel. He's, he's brilliant at it. Bobby and I see each other every now and then. We both live in OKC and we'll, we'll connect every once in a while and, and end you know, our text messages with let's get dinner sometime. And we both know it's going to be like six months before we, we actually connect. We have that kind of relationship. It's, it's good for both of us. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It was good to be on stage with you, having a chance to kind of share that uh, that time with you in front of Brand Chain members. By the way, if you're not a Brand Chain member, you need to get involved. Brand Chain is the community for for folks like us: marketing, branding, printers, you name it. Um, this is an association where uh, I fostered my own business, um, and I know uh, Brand Fuel uh, just recently invested their uh, themselves in a membership with Brand Chain. Um, not 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 enough great things to say. And there's a show coming up here in October at Margaritaville. This year, we have a really cool concept we call the Solutions Village. It's where suppliers and sponsors can showcase their most impressive solutions, um, all in the comfort of cottages that line the Margaritaville property. It's going to be a great time. We'll be there. I hope we'll see you all there. Guess what? Alyssa, do you know what time it is? What time is it? Uh, you should know what time it is. Should we tell them? I guess we should. Well, okay. So I'm turning to this camera for dramatic effect because that's what we do because this is a show and I'm going to cheat because I've got um, a, a pad you can't see over here that has all of my directions on it. So let's just make sure that I'm going where. So this is the time where we play what's on your wall. What's on your wall. That was a cool sound effect. We're adding that in post. So um, <laughs> Anyway, that's near, near here, near there, is it? <laughs> so um, this is where um, we have you show off something in our offices, something that's meaningful, something that has a story to it, um, you know, just something that you're very proud of. So Eric, um, you're the very first one to play What's on Our Wall, and I understand you have something extremely intriguing to show us today. I'm really eager to see this. What do you got for us today, Mr. Eric? So today I want to share with you one of my prized possessions. And uh, this is an item that was gifted to me by my brother-in-law after he visited a thrift store here in town. And it is this bronze apple belt buckle. And if, if you know anything about me, you know I'm an apple fanboy and apologist. Um, I, so like I said, my brother-in-law gave this to me probably 22 plus years ago. And, and I love it. And what I really like about it is it demonstrates the power of branded merchandise and promotional products. That belt buckle was sold in the Apple corporate catalog, which would be like a predecessor to a company store, right? In 1984. And it's still out there in the world. I, I like it a lot. I awkwardly show it to people. And, uh, and it, it's just a great example of how branded merchandise can persist over time and still reap dividends. I, absolutely. I mean, you've got some equity in that belt. Um, and as a brand uh, over the years, uh, imagine all the equity they have worldwide, all the advertisements that they've had, um, you know, mugs and things like this that are just kind of sitting around with their logo on it. I mean, that stuff stays around forever. It's, it's great. Like you said, the power yeah. of promo, it's, it's extreme, and especially when, when you're dealing with branding. Um, it's memorable, you know, it's memorable. It's something you can touch. It's tangible. So yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. I, I actually had the, I had the opportunity to meet Steve Wozniak once. I sent you a picture and I, I showed it to him. I was wearing the belt because I'm always wearing the belt. And I said, Steve, check this out. He was like, no. And then he was like, oh, your belt buckle. And he told me, he said, oh, I still have one of those in a closet somewhere. I remember talking to the guy uh, who sold those to us. Great piece. So that was fun. That is incredible. So um, we're showing a picture of now. Um, by the way, you clean up real nice, Eric. That's a good look for you. I, w I was just trying to chase uh, Bobby's fashion sense for a while there. So I imagine that's probably at one of 50 or 60 suits you've got hanging in your closet. Am I right? I'm, I'm actually there bagged up and ready for Goodwill. Oh, awesome. So no <laughs> embroidered suits or jackets or ties or anything for you? 
Nope, Brainfield keeps it casual. Uh, I'll keep a, a black one, a brown one, and a gray one. That's <laughs> a clean, clean closet. So I have, I have something to share. Um, it's not as cool as swag or promo, but it did come off my wall, and it is something important to the area. So give me one second. I'll be right back. So you guys can chat with, uh, you know, while I'm back here destroying my office trying to get to this thing. The apple belt is really cool. It is. So, you know, talk about something with some recognition. Anybody here uh, fans of The Walking Dead? My son is a fan. I have not seen it myself. I almost thought I was going to hear crickets chirping. So there, there's, um, you know, the, the area we live in is kind of like a little Hollywood, right? So there's um, all kinds of shows that are filmed here. A lot of the Marvel movies are filmed here. Again, The Walking Dead's here. So my wife... Um, Found some. She had an opportunity to get me some some memorabilia uh, related to that show, and so here I have with me today is a a signed uh, knockoff Stratocaster, but it's got Norman Reedus' signature on it. So I, you know that's pretty important to me. Um, something that's kind of cool. Um, kind of remember the name, The Walking Dead, and I don't know how I'm going to tie that into promo or swag, but you know what? It's cool. So just deal with it, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, that's well, that's a little bit of my memorabilia. What do you got to say? I'll tell it. I'll tell you how you can you can kind of weave it in promotional products and in items like that all have a story around them and humans like to tell stories right so anytime an item or you know something on the wall can facilitate a story like that i think that's a win for humanity absolutely couldn't agree more um and wow look at just like that uh, what's on your wall has ended, and it is time for our next segment, which is show or tell. Show or tell. Um, so this is a really kind of a. This is basically where we slam the car into reverse and tear out our transmission because we're going straight from talking about belt buckles and the waz to talking a little bit of shop. So um, show or tell is just that. Um, you can either. Uh, show us something really rad um, on our screen, or you just talk about something that you know maybe you're really proud of, something that you accomplished through e-commerce, brownie points, if that involves using liftoff. So, Eric, what do you got for us today? So, over the last year, I've had a lot of opportunity to really get in deep with liftoff, and specifically the liftoff suite of APIs, which... Personally, I'd always had some kind of hang up about interacting directly with APIs, but something clicked for me last year and, and using no code tools like Zapier to, to put together light code solutions has been a real win for us. And I want to share with you a specific use case uh, that we put together. Yeah, we, sure. yeah, we had a client ask us, if it was possible for their managers to buy gift cards for their employees. Previously, when they wanted something like that, they would make the request. They'd say, we need 50 gift cards for you know this employee recognition campaign we're working on. We would generate those gift cards, upload them to Liftoff, and then send them a spreadsheet. And it was kind of up to them to figure out how they were going to communicate that. What they were looking for was a way to purchase the gift card as a transaction on the store because they had some accounting requirements uh, that they needed to meet. And so they wanted to see that as an order. And then they wanted a way for the recipient to get a nice branded email that would basically give them the card code, right? So they didn't have to figure out another way to email it. So what we did is using Zapier and Mandrill, which is just a, an email tool, we put together a process by which a manager can go to their online store. They can pick the card denomination, tell us the name of the individual receiving the card, who the giver of that card is, the recipient's email address, and then like a custom message. And so the process is they would fill this out in the message. They might say something like, hey, John, great job on that project. Here's 50 bucks for the company store. And as soon as they checked out, this process would run. So first, the, we would hit the gift card API. Actually, let me back up. First, we would look for a new order that's in process. 
And then if that order contained this gift card SKU, then we would continue with the workflow, which included generating a unique code for the gift card, hitting the gift cards API to create that gift card. And then we would use the rest of the information that the customer provided us to put together a really nice branded email. So it looks like it's coming from the client. Um, it's got the custom message in it. It's got the gift code, a nice big redeem your gift code, you know, click here button. And then the last step finally was to ship that line item so that we don't have open orders uh, in the back end. And as a result, uh, what we've seen is usage of gift cards increase dramatically on that program, which is great because we want people to spend money on the product because that's how we make our money. You got adoption. You got heavy duty adoption is what I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good, a, a good enhancement to, uh, gain more business from that program for sure. That's an incredible example. And I know you probably have several more. I know that there's some other things I think you've done relative to um, like variable video and things like that in commerce, obviously some things we don't have time to talk about today, but um, you know, that, that adoption and that engagement is so important, right? Um, you know, in these days in e-commerce, you kind of have to cater towards, I hate, how do I say it any other way is, you know, the kind of the stupidest user that's out there, right? So you need to make the process intuitive. You need to make it easy. And I think gone are the days where you, you've got some kind of like manual or video showing you how to use a B2B website, right? You know, to place these orders. And so what you just described, it, it sounds like it's just uh, pretty much like a, almost a touch-free process for most of the folks involved outside of the employee going through a few minor steps. Everything else wraps up nicely. All the other systems get the information they need. And it closes the gap very quickly on, on the whole thing. That's yeah, incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kudos for that. Um, and so, you know, what you're talking about there kind of uh, makes me think a little bit, you know, we've got some recipes we've been building ourselves in the uh, Liftoff API. And, you know, of course, we're improving our documentation set as well. I mean, the idea is we want more people interacting with it like you, you are today. You know, we want more people engaged. We want more people using the automation tools that are there. And, you know, through those types of tools, like, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but you can extend the platform, you know, leagues uh, from where, you know, it is just kind of out of the box, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. That's when I was at Robin working on the 451 platform, you know, we found ourselves needing something similar specifically regarding gift cards and and I was able to do something similar and you know, when it comes to interesting things like like variable data video which you mentioned, um social media campaign management, like a lot opens up when once you're kind of behind the scenes and in the APIs. It really it becomes a creative process to think, okay, this is available. What cool stuff can I do with it? And it's, it's a lot of fun and it's rewarding work. That's incredible. Oh, wait a minute. I'm hearing something. Alyssa, do you hear that? Do you hear what I'm hearing? What are you hearing? I'm hearing some supply chain chatter. Supply chain chatter. So uh -oh. uh, if, is, if it couldn't get cheesier enough, but really this is where the things on the show get really real, right? I mean, if we're being really, really, really real, the supply chain has been nothing short of turbulent this year. I mean, it's kicked everybody's ass. Um, I think, is it safe to say, I mean, everyone's having issues procuring pretty much anything and everything. Um, print manufacturers, or they're finding themselves on print allocation, so they can't even get the paper they need to, to print their product. Swag, it's stuck on a barge somewhere, right, um, in some cases. Um, you add, like, the cost of fuel, shipping, everything else, man, it just, it's, it's, a, it's insane. It's a disaster. I'm just going to say it, man. It, it sucks. So let's dish for a minute. How, how does a company like Brandfuel succeed in, in such a turbulent supply chain uh, that we're in today? Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the most important thing is transparency and, and open conversation about what's going on. Fortunately, our clients have been very understanding because they see supply chain issues all over their lives, you know, in their work lives and their personal lives. Uh, so some, some good conversation and, and managing of expectations is really important. From a company store perspective, when I'm merchandising a company store, I like to look for what I call program safe uh, product. And pr all program safe means is there's deep inventory. It's not going to be put on uh, clearance in six months the product will be there and the price will be somewhat stable a year from now when we're doing replenishment orders. 
That's my pro tip. Yeah, you know, one of the unfortunate things, you know, we see a lot of companies, right, in, in the nature of the business we're in. There are a lot of folks that just didn't make it through COVID, uh, for example. And I think that's probably what, when we started to see some of those issues crop up first, um, I remember it pretty clearly, March, uh, was it like March 12th or so of 2020, uh, I was in the Los Angeles airport, everything started shutting down, didn't even know if we were going to make it home. <laughs> uh, we were just coming off actually the end of a brand chain event. Um, I think it was that Thursday we were meeting, I believe it was in Scottsdale, does that sound right? Um, and I think... Uh, the economy, the supply chain, everything was pretty much from that moment forward, it was changed. I mean, things were different. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the things that you mentioned, you know, managing those expectations, having that transparency. Um, but then you mentioned something, the creative alternatives that really made the difference. Um, and those creative alternatives, like, you know, for you, what does that mean? Creating new products? What is that? What does that look like for, for brand fuel for creative alternatives? Yeah. So at Brand Fuel, when we're merchandising a company store program, or if we're just working on an ad hoc campaign, we take a strategy first approach to branded merchandise. It's not enough to sell somebody a koozie with a one color pad imprint. We really don't do stress balls and really anything that is going to end up in a landfill in a few months. Uh, Danny likes to call it brand fill. <laughs> Because we take this strategy first approach, somebody will say to us, we want a mug. Well, why do you want a mug? Because we want, to give, uh, we want to give one to all of our employees this year. Okay, but what do you want those employees to feel when they receive this gift? And what do you want them to do next when they receive this gift? Maybe mug does that for you. Fortunately, there's a ton of mugs in our industry. But maybe there's something else we can do to kind of elevate that experience uh, for those employees and those recipients. And so that's how we can get creative, because at that point, we're not sourcing a mug. We're sourcing a response. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Um, this isn't necessarily part of the script, but I'm going to we'll talk about it here for a minute anyway, because one of the things you talk about is that emotional response to getting something. And although we don't think about it very much, you know, there's this thing called the Amazon effect, right? That every one of us, that, you know, we're trying to fight. Amazon is a master sourcer and procurer. Like they've got vendors and suppliers all over the place. They've made it incredibly easy for your home consumer to buy anything they want. And while it's not necessarily trudging on um, our industry yet, it's, it's, that, it's that experience they deliver. Um, and to, to some extent, the emotional response that you feel when you get that Amazon, the little smiley package in the mail, um, and, you know, some of the things you, you talk about, you know, just kind of reminded me a little bit about that process. And so I guess you know, one last question I'll ask is um, what's brand fuel doing to combat the Amazon effect? Uh, the Amazon effect. So we have some really good fulfillment partners that, you know, help us with the, the last and arguably most important journey of an e-commerce order. Right. And so we're able to offer very quick delivery like Amazon would. Um, there's also an expectation these days from users of e-commerce that the site looks good, that it follows you know, user patterns that people have come to expect. And so fortunately, we're able to build some sites that look pretty sharp. Yeah, that's, it's, it's so important, right? I mean, the experience is everything. Um, it can make the difference between you know, having a transaction or not having a transaction. Um, and in this day and age, we need transactions. So yeah, I appreciate your insight on that. And oh, what is that? So what did you hear that? I know it's time for cash or swag. Cash or swag. Well, let's do it. All right. So the, um, our, our brilliant and baffling, she said we could call her baffling Eric. So uh, we're going to keep calling her brilliant <laughs> baffling. We are about to spin the wheel. So here's the thing. You are at the mercy of our luck. Um, now, you can't see this. This is completely off camera, but we have a prize wheel over here. Alyssa's going to hold up for you. Um, and there's kind of all kinds of stuff on here. Uh, you could win some cool liftoff swag. Um, you could be stuck with some lousy old cash. I mean, yeah, I'd go with a liftoff that? swag if it were me, <laughs> right? I mean, everybody likes liftoff swag. So what's it going to be here? What do you want? What are you going for? Look, it's it's got to be the swag, and I'll take this opportunity to say if your clients are giving Visa gift cards or Amazon gift cards 
to their employees and, and customers, that stuff needs to stop because here's the deal. I've received gift cards before as, as a gift for one reason or another. And I load it onto my Amazon account and then I completely forget that it's there. I might notice that a gift card balance was used when I place my Amazon order and I'm not gonna remember who it was from. Meanwhile, promotional product, branded merch, it's on your desk, it's, it's on your body, you're wearing it out and that's it, that's it, that's the one. Now I have a story to tell. Every time I see that logo, I'm like, hey, I remember that time I was on that show with Liftoff and it was a lot of fun and all those good vibes come back and they're still related to your brand, which is exactly what you want. Again, we're sourcing a response, right? So all that to say, I'll take the swag any day. Take the swag. All right. So, yeah, all right. So here's it. it. It would suck to lose the wheel on our first show. So, you know, Alyssa's a little strong. She might go a little heavy. So what do you think, Eric? About 60% thrust? Bro, make it level 9,000. 9,000. Turn 9, it to 11. All right. Level 9, okay, let's make sure to get the ASMR a little bit, you know, get the. All right. On your mark. Wheel. Here we go, Alyssa. On your mark. Get set. Spin that wheel. Now, what do we have? What do we have? What are we doing here? I'm going to stand know. up for She's this one. still spinning. Big Good money, big swag. swag. We have a mug, y'all. We have, we have a mug for Eric Granada. Congratulations, oh Eric. Gosh. You were the... The first recipient of, um, boy, I'm shaking my cameras everywhere. You are the first recipient of a uh, official liftoff swag from this show. Congratulations. Heck yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, Eric, um, it looks like we're unfortunately out of time, but, uh, man, we loved having you on the show. We hope that you'll come back again. And so um, I guess as a parting thing for all of our um, audience back at home while I still shift my cameras around here during this live studio recording, <laughs> um, Thank you all for watching. We hope you found this content to be uh, exciting, engaging, and uh, we're going to come back with a, a lot more content. So be on the lookout. You've been warned. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.